Hi there, it's Russ Douglas 222. I'm here in the uh, Brucey Bonus garage and uh, we've just, just come to do some filming for the IR safety video, which we'll be doing very shortly, hopefully, um, if, we have, if we stop discussing stuff. Um, but I just want to show you these lenses. So these are 37mm lenses that many of you will have seen on the Night Vision Forum and the airgunforum.co.uk. Um, and there's an Ambo the yellow, um, a deep blue, deep green, deep red, and Bruce has just discovered he's now got he's got an extra lens in here, which is for his eyes, so so he can focus focus the reticle without his glasses, um, and he's just discovered that this amber one really uh, accentuates and highlights the uh, reticle, makes it look almost like it's uh, fluoresces. Yeah, right? look, make it look like it's an illuminated reticle. Yeah, excellent. So that's a little you bonus. Try, you want to try and take some video through the there. So, uh, okay. So we're trying to video through. And the reticle looks green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's us videoing um, through the PAR 008 <laughs> with the amber lens and the reticle. It, it's the camera's off to the left. There we go. And trying to show how that. There we go. That reticle seems to be very bright, almost fluorescing. That's brilliant. <laughs> Great, okay. nice little discovery. So you heard it here first. But yeah, I'll, I'll include the links of uh, for these lenses. Uh, these are all eBay. I'll include the link under the video in the description. And uh, meanwhile, let's crack on with what yeah. we, we came here to do. All right, here you go. Okay, freeze, I'm sorry man. No, no, it's alright. Um, I can uh, get him, get him Right, um, so, let, let, let me show Yeah, go ahead. Hello everyone, Rusty Douglas 222. This hey, is Bruce. This is Bruce, and this is now Bruce's new nickname, Bruce Seven Foxes. <laughs> he was out the other few nights ago with Davey and Albert, Seven Foxes, in three permissions in one night. Quite pleased with that. I <laughs> no wonder. Pat on the back for that one. Especially since one was a 300 yard or so. <laughs> 300 yards, yeah. Awesome stuff. Um, right. Um, so, we're doing a video on IR illuminators, of which there are several, and IR safety in general, and that's, that's one as well. Um, and so. Well, basically, what's happened is that more and more people are getting into night vision, mainly because the cost of the equipment and the performance of the equipment. Is getting to the point where it becomes quite cheap to buy really good night vision equipment. Prices come down, performance has gone up. And one of the main reasons for the performance going up has been the fact that we're using now using illuminators which are substantially more powerful than we used before. And those illuminators bring with them some safety issues that we think need to be spoken about. Um, not we don't want to scare people off. But we do want people to recognise that there are potential issues about, the, about about these illuminators and that there are things that you should simply not do when you're around them. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all explain why infrared illuminators are needed. We'll talk a little bit, bit about the different types of illuminate, illuminators that are available, the pros and cons of each type, the safety issues surrounding each type, the legal issues regarding these illuminators and and, in, 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 and at the end we'll discuss how to use these things safely. So that's what we're hoping to do. We don't know of anybody that's done this before and because there are so many people new to this who maybe don't know that there are potential issues with these things, we felt it was necessary to, 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 to make it clear to people who may have bought some of this night vision equipment that there are things you can do and there are things you certainly shouldn't do. So that's where we start. Okay. Right, um, so you want me to carry on? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so the first thing is why do we need infrared illuminators? Well, the night vision equipment we're using, and here's a couple of examples here of the PARD 007 and the PARD 008, and Pulsar and Yukon and ATN all make digital night vision equipment. And digital night vision equipment is based on the same type of camera that you have in a digital camera that you might use to take photographs at home. The camera that's in your telephone. They, those cameras are great. They are absolutely fantastic. 
and they have one extra feature that most people don't know about and that is the fact that they are sensitive to infrared light. They can see light that our eyes can't see and we exploit that fact by using infrared illumination to illuminate something in the darkness that then becomes visible to the camera. So although your eye can't see the infrared that's being shone onto the, the scene, the camera can pick that up and create a picture that you can see when you look through the eyepiece or look on a screen. So that's the basis of digital night vision. The fact is that digital cameras can see infrared light and if you want to make it work for, uh, for hunting or for security or for viewing wildlife at night, you need a source of infrared light to make the whole thing work. Okay, so um, while filming this IR Illuminator video with Bruce, I uh, want, wanted to point out that a big complaint about most IR sources I've come across uh, in my limited night vision experience is how can you tell when they're on? And if they are on, how can you tell what power level they're on? Because a lot of these IR sources have got a push switch and uh, you push it for on and then a very gentle push three more pushes to go through the three power uh, three power levels and then off and uh, I realized something while we were doing the test rig setup let me show you so come through to the foot of our loft stairs where it's a little bit gloomier uh, perfect to show off this uh, effect and uh, let's see what the camera picks up so here we've got a tracer LED ray lamp and currently the only way I know of to see is it on is to look in the uh, front of the lens albeit at a slight angle so hopefully you don't get the full effect but if I switch this on you can see this pink glow let me assure you I cannot see anything with the naked eye a slight press on the on the rear button it goes brighter another slight press brighter still another one back to dim and then off so that's the lead ray ir torch the packaging describes it as having a 400 meter beam which is a little bit optimistic to say the least but um doesn't even tell you the wavelength you have to del delve through the instructions and at the bottom you see that it's 850 nanometers and if i put this on i'm, I'm not looking at this with a naked eye yep there we go the camera sees very very bright with a naked eye there's only a very slight glow here we have the black sun dark engine from clive ward great bit of kit so on whoops on see that's how easy it is to do right that's the lowest power level medium high very high back down to low again but I can assure you I can see nothing with the naked eye but here we have the glow and there we go digital cameras picking it up very clearly so you now know how to tell when your IR torch or light source is on and how to tell what power level it's on uh, use your mobile phone this thing here and uh, most, with most of these uh, torches, as with visible eye torches for lamping, um, most of these, whatever power level you leave it on when you switch the torch off, is what it'll be on when you switch it back on again. Um, it's got a, they've got a memory function. So, brilliant bit of information. I never knew that before a few days ago. You heard it here first. So, when I see infrared, we need to get a little bit technical here. We're going to start speaking about some numbers here. The human, human eye can see light all the colours of the rainbow, from violet right through to red. And each of those is different wavelengths of light. And at the ultraviolet, at the, the blue end of the violet end of the spectrum, the wavelength of light is about 380, 390 nanometers. A nanometer is rather small. It's about a thousandth of a millionth of a millimetre. So it's kind of small. But that's the wavelength of light at the blue end of the spectrum. When you get to the red end of the spectrum, you're up at about 750, 760 nanometers. 
Once you go much above that, the eye doesn't see those wavelengths. Your eye doesn't respond to light at those wavelengths. Um, you don't get the sensation of vision that you do when you see visible light. That's just how our eyes work. So when you get up to above about 800, 850 nanometers, you really can't see that light. But when you use 850 nanometer illuminators, what you'll see is a red glow. And that's simply because the light is so strong that your eye still responds to it a little bit. Okay? So the most common wavelength for our infrared illuminators is 850 nanometers. And if you look at an 850 nanometer illuminator, and you need to be careful when you do that, is what you're going to see is a dull red glow. Like you say, in lights on security cameras. Yeah, that's right. If you, you see lights on security cameras, you'll see a dull red glow. Sometimes they go to an even longer wavelength, 940 nanometers, which is even less visible. Um, some people for night vision hunting use 940 because they think it doesn't spook the quarry as much mm -hmm. um, because it's even less visible to the, to the quarry species. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I've never found 850 spooking anything, but some people claim that it does. A lot of trail cams use 940 nanometer because they reckon that it doesn't spook animals coming towards the trail cam. 940 is, is significantly less visible than 850. It's also the case that the sensors, the cameras that we use to detect the infrared are much less sensitive to 940 nanometer light than they are yeah. to 850. Less so, efficient. Yeah, so you need to use more light to get the same, sorry, the same um, image that you do from 850. So um, that's basically why we need to use infrared light. If we don't use infrared light, we ain't going to get a picture. We'll go again? Yep, go for it. Okay. <coughs> There are three different types of infrared illuminator commonly in use. We'll have a look at each of them uh, in more detail, but basically they fall into the following categories. We have what we call traditional lasers. Uh, these were basically developed for tube night, night vision equipment. They don't get used much with digital, and I certainly don't recommend that anybody who's got digital night vision buy one of these. These are, when we come to the safety part, you'll, you'll explain to you, these are actually the most dangerous lasers of the world. This type of traditional laser was supplanted by LED based illuminators, and these are just two examples of fairly large LED illuminators, um, light emitting diodes, and over the last three or four years they have become much more powerful and got to a point where you could build an illuminator using an LED that was excellent, gave excellent performance with what we call non-HD night vision equipment, in other words, things like the Photon, uh, the Drone Pro, the earlier Digisites, and most of the DIY homebrew digital night vision units that were built worked perfectly well with LEDs because those types of, those types of um, night vision equipment used pretty sensitive cameras. However, Technology moves onwards, and people want more performance, and the next thing it want, they wanted was full high-definition night vision. Um, the, diff the problem with high-definition night vision is you need a hell of a lot more light than you can get from an LED. So to overcome that problem, we've now moved to a different type of illuminator using a device called a, a, wait for it, a vertical cavity surface, surface emitting laser, VCSEL, or as known by everybody, a VIXEL. The Vixel is kind of a cross between a traditional laser and an LED. It produces a lot more light than an LED and in fact produces enough light so that high definition night vision equipment like these parts here can work perfectly well. If we didn't have these Vixel illuminators, and there are also Vixel illuminators in the parts, high definition night vision simply wouldn't be possible. So we've got traditional lasers, LEDs, and Vixel-based illuminators. Oh, by the way, the last video I put up was Bruce's footage. That's the 100 milliwatt laser pointer you used in the first, yep, footage, right. first clip. And, and then Sirius is what we used in the second part. Right. So we, what we had was we had a PARD 008 for reference. So the first video showed the PARD against the traditional um, 
uh, traditional laser, yep. and the second video showed the PARD against the Sirius. Yep. And if you look at the beginning of the, 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 uh, the first video, when I switch this thing on, the first comment is it looks like a feckin' lightsaber coming on. I and mean, that's exactly what it is, because it fires such a narrow, narrow beam of light. And that's where all the danger comes from. So, um, carrying on from that, as I say, the, the danger with these things is that they project a very, very, very narrow beam, like uh, a laser pointer. And that's the problem. The, the beam is so narrow, all the energy is con concentrated in a very narrow beam. If you were to look at this, even out to five, six, seven, eight meters away, that full beam would go right into the pupil of your eye. These others, the beam spreads out a lot more. So although they might be quite powerful close in, the further away you get, the beam diverges. So there's not much power goes into your eye. But what? with this thing, the full power of the laser is still going to go right into your eye, even at five or six meters away. Sorry, what, what I'll do is I'll include, right about here, I'll splice in um, two photos that we took on Bruce's garage door with a tape measure uh, for scale. And one was <coughs> with uh, the pad illuminator. Mm -hmm. Yep. Focused down tightly and at five was, meters, it was a about three, three or four hundred millimeters. Yeah, about three hundred millimeter circle, I think. Yeah. And then with this um, thing, it was about five millimeters. Uh, I think I think I measured it at seven mil. Okay. Seven mil on yep. the on the tech measure. Mm -hmm. So I'll splice in those two photos so you can see what we mean. The part might be, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred milliwatts or whatever, but it's at minimum at uh, the tightest focus. It was three hundred mil diameter. That 100 milliwatt was over seven millimeter diameter at the same five meters. So you'll, you'll see this, the direct comparison. There, there, are, there are two things to consider here. One is the size of the pupil of your eye. If the beam is wider than the size of your pupil of your eye, not all of the beam is going to go into your eye. So a widely diverging beam is less dangerous because less of the total amount of energy being produced by the laser or the illuminator is going to go into your eye. With a very, very tight beam like the traditional laser produces, pretty much all of the light from that is going to go straight into your eye. The other major issue with IR illuminators is that because our eyes don't essentially see the colour, we don't blink or turn our head away the way that we would normally do if it was a bright visible light. Yeah, the little, the little red keyring laser pointers for a fibre from the corner shop, you, one of those, they're very dangerous, but if one of those shines in your eye, you have what's called a blink reflex. You naturally do that. Yep. That's an instinctive built-in yep. safety measure. You don't get that with IR lasers that's right. because your eye doesn't see the light. And that's that's a that's a, that's a fairly very important point. And it's, it's one of the reasons why they can be dangerous because you, you can be you can be looking at one of these for a long time and not realise how bright it is, and it could be damaging your eye. So basically, you need to be careful around these things because you have no idea of how bright they actually are because your eye is not your eye although it's seen them. It's not, your brain is not telling you how bright that is and not making you... It's not, it's not warning you. No, that's right, not, not giving you the blink of your Now, we have a little test we're going to do. We're going to show you, because there's no point in quoting numbers about power and things like that, because they don't really mean anything. We've got a simple test that we're going to use to show you how powerful these things are. And we call it the black bag burning test, don't we? And what we're going to do is, we've got some sections of thin black pedal bin liner, it's about 30 microns thick, it's black, it's matte black, so it's actually rather good at absorbing infrared laser light. Yeah, but, but what we're going to do is we'll show you the effect of these lasers on that. Now we can't say that what happens to this piece of black plastic bag is the same as would happen to your eye, but I think the comparison is enough to make you think twice about looking at one of these things. Yeah. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Okay. Um, I'm going to, how about I... Give you some, I'll, I'll go and become a roving cameraman for a minute. Okay, we need to do this somewhere where we can actually see it happening. Yeah. 